and I believe that we're going to have an amazing time this morning. I know Bishop is not here, but like he always says, don't miss your God moment for looking for the word to come through a normal direction when God may be trying to use a different direction. So you don't look at me. I am simply a vessel of God to use by God. You hear my voice, but it's the Spirit of God that will speak through me this morning. So don't pay attention to who's in the suit. Don't pay attention to who's speaking. Get in contact with heaven this morning. Get in contact with heaven and allow the heaven gates to open unto you. Open your hearts to receive what God is going to do and what God is going to say on this morning. You know, you remember in the Bible, on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one place at one time and on one accord. So it is this morning that we all are in the faith center at one time, one place and on one accord. And any time that you come into a, a, a group like this and you have a unified corporate expectation, it's a breeding ground for the Holy Spirit to move. The Holy Spirit cannot move in any environment where there's dysfunction and there's not unity. I don't know what you're believing God to do in your life. I don't know what you're believing God to do in your life, but I guarantee you if we pull together and we get on one accord in the realm of the Spirit, we open ourselves for God to do the impossible, for God to do something mighty and amazing on this morning. So right before we get into the Word of God, we want to set the atmosphere. It's already been set. The atmosphere is ripe for God to move and speak in this place. And so we want to go and just worship God on this morning. We want to pray. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And so we honor God. We're going to be speaking on liberation this morning. But I want to go before God if you'll lift your hands. I want to pray to set the, move, the movement for the word to go forth unhindered. It's, in, it's already been said, I just want to simply add to what's already been put together. So Father, this morning I come before you as your servant, acknowledging you for being God and God alone. Father, we thank you because we've come, we've come this morning to receive a life-transforming word from you. And Father, we know that because you're God, that you will never let us down, that you will always give us the answers that we need at the right time. So Father, we thank you that the atmosphere has already been set for the word to go forth. Under here, I decree and declare that the word will come forth with boldness, with authority, with simplicity. And I decree and declare that the enemy has no room and no place to dwell in this place on this morning. We dismantle the very works of the, of the enemy right now. Father, let your anointing move. We thank you for the angels that are camped round about us. We thank you for the anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. And Father, we give you glory in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys can take your seat. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Thank you so much. Father, we bless you. This morning's message is titled, The Power of a Liberated Mind. The Power of a Liberated Mind. How many of you guys know, when it comes to your thinking and belief systems, we all have thinking and belief systems that has either been shaped by your culture, your upbringing, your teaching, or your personal experiences. And oftentimes, one's responses to the issues of life are often a reflection of internal thoughts that no one can see or belief system. And it's my belief that at the core of our thinking, truth is revealed. A lot of times when we look at people, when we look at what's going on in the world, it's a direct reflection of the parts of our lives that man cannot see. The only way that you can see into those hidden areas is that the truth of the God's word will have to be the light that discerns between those areas. 
and reveal what's going on. And I believe that we're in a time where many people are looking for a solution to manage the issues of life to transcend beyond the mental and emotional bondages of life. Oftentimes, we speak about freedom, freedom of the mind, freedom from bondages, freedom from all kinds of different things. But how many of you know it's not enough to just get free if you can't maintain your freedom? The end goal, when God breaks you free from something that's holding you in bondage, the end goal is that you live a life of sustainable freedom. And we're going to talk about that tonight, where this morning, about sustainable freedom and liberating your mind from being polluted with negativity. So often, we have so much access to information every day. Every minute, every hour, we're getting information. We're getting information from family members, information from colleagues and coworkers, information from church members, information from social media. A lot of different places, we're getting a world of information. And in most cases, the information is negative. If you go to the doctor, oftentimes it's not the information that you want to hear. If you call home and you check in on the family, a lot of times you may get something good, but you can rest assured along the journey, you're going to hear some negative information. It's in those moments that our mind begins to wonder. It begins to roam and we're trying to figure out the pieces to the puzzle and trying to find a way to process the information that we receive. You know, our minds is likened unto a computer. Most of us in today's society probably have some type of computer, be that it's a laptop, desktop, iPad, um, even your cell phone, a small type of computer. Our mind is subjected, just like a computer, our mind is subjected to information, good and bad information. In every computer, there's what they call a hard drive. A hard drive is the place within the computer that receives the information it stores all information. It's the, also the place where information is also retrieved. And our, and our mind operates just like that. That it is the hard drive that receives information. Day in and day out, information is coming. From all different directions, information is trying to come into my mind and it's either trying to pass through or it's trying to settle in. It's trying to store into that place or into that hard drive. But how many of you know, like with a computer, there's no way that you can defend yourself against the information unless there's an antivirus software. In order to protect your computer for, from dysfunction or malware malfunction, you need an antivirus software. So with our minds that because negative information, good and bad information is coming through at all times, if we do not have an antivirus over my thoughts, oh, I'm telling you, the enemy is going to find a way in. He's going to find a way in. And you have to understand that without an antivirus software, you're prone to catastrophic um, situations. Your computer could completely die. If not die, at minimum, there will be dysfunction within that computer, which makes it challenging for it to operate the way that it was initially or creatively designed to operate. And so the antivirus, what that does, it scans through the hard drive, looking for footholds of malfunction. It's scanning through the hard drive to try and identify parts of the hard drive. If there, is there any place within this hard drive that's subject to destruction? It's scanning through. And when you get a hard, when you get that virus or that software on your computer, you have to scan it periodically. Because even though it's on there, it doesn't mean that information is not still going to try to intercept. So periodically, you still have to scan. Uh-huh. So like with our minds, God has so magnificently and creatively created this mind. This mind, which is open to all types of information. We see a lot of information and we hear a lot of information. 
But that's a daily routine or a process that we have to go through to maintain what we call the mind of Christ. For the believer, our antivirus software is the Word of God. It is simply the Word of God. It's nothing deep. It's just the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, the Word of God. The same Word that is active and logos. The same Word that is able to discern between good and evil. It is our antivirus software. See, you have to understand, in this life, we're in an ongoing battle. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God and through the pulling down of strongholds. See, there are three areas in life where you can actually receive information. Thoughts will come all day. Thoughts will come in and out of your life every minute, every day, but they come from three areas. They will either come from God, they will come from Satan, or they will come from your own perception. And you have to be able to identify what's the thoughts from God versus what's from the enemy versus what's from my own selfish desires. So he says, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Now you have to understand what's happening in this scripture. Strongholds are the strongholds that's in our mind and our thought life because the enemy can only enter into our life through our thoughts. That's how he's trying to get in. He's trying to get into your thought and he tries to destroy your life through your thinking. That's why the Bible says the enemy comes only but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we have to begin to cast down all imaginations that totally are against the will of God. So he says in the scripture, casting down imaginations, every high thought, that exalts of itself up against the knowledge of God and bring it into every thought into the obedience of Christ. Now we must understand that Satan himself is trying to prevent us from living in God's perfect will and experiencing the best life available. Casting down imaginations. Casting down, bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ. That sounds to me like God is saying you have a responsibility that though you cannot stop information from coming to you, you have the opportunity and the power to redirect your thoughts. That is, it is in your ability for God has already empowered you with the ability to redirect every thought. But here's the key. We often look at the good thoughts and we say, well, you know, that's not, that's not a bad thought, so I can just do that myself. But the Bible, he never said bring only your bad thoughts. He says bring every thought. Because the worst thing you can do is have a good thought that's not God authorized. So he says, bring every thought into or in agreement with the word of God or into the obedience of God. Because when I begin to bring my thoughts into agreement with the will of God or the word of God, what happens is God then becomes governor of my life. He begins to govern my thoughts and he begins to help me discern the thoughts and decide, okay, son, that's not what you need to be thinking. That's not in my will for you. And these negative thoughts are coming into our lives. We look at situations. It's, it amazes me how oftentimes we can look at circumstances and situations and come to a preconceived conclusion without having facts or truthful information. I would suggest to you that we live in a society today that is very presumptuous and we come to a lot of assumptions with no information. That's why you cannot be in bondage to other people's thoughts and opinions about you. My God, my God, you must understand that everybody has a right to an opinion, but I don't have to validate it. Uh-huh. See, you have, let me just tell you this, you have the right to an opinion. But my question is, what is your opinion valid on? What information do you have to support your opinion? If you don't have no supporting information, then your opinion holds no value. But I do respect the fact that you have a right to have your opinion. So you cannot allow the thoughts of men, women, children, boys, and girls, boyfriends, girlfriends, exes, husbands, wives, you cannot allow the opinions of people to put you in bondage. 
It is what it is. It is simply an opinion. Ah, I hope this blesses you. An opinion, in an opinion. So often we don't talk about the opinions because a lot of times we get, we, our, our emotions get out of whack when we realize somebody has an opinion enough of us. But see, that's why you got to eradicate every negative way of thinking and subject it to the Word of God. Because even if your opinion of me is negative, I'm walking in truth and liberation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow the freedom of God that I walk in to provoke the bondage that you're in. I will not be subject to man's opinions. You, 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 you cannot allow that type of negative thinking to infiltrate your life where it puts you in a place of stagnation and, and dysfunction where you cannot move forward. So the Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 7, so as a man of woman thinketh in his own heart, so is he. So you have to understand as you're thinking, the more you think negative, what will happen is it's going to start to settle in your heart. If you don't believe that you won't be healed, it's going to start settling in your heart. If you believe that everybody hates you and nobody loves you, it's going to start settling in your heart. If you believe that you're not, a, if you believe that you're the, um, not the top and, not, and you're the bottom, guess what? It's going to start settling in your heart. If you don't believe that God can bring you out of the situation that you're stuck in today, it's going to settle into your heart. And what happens is there's another scripture that says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will begin to speak. And what happens is your mouth can only speak of what is already in great abundance in your heart. And then the Bible says, from the, from the heart flows the very issues of life. Out of that same heart that you have now begun to allow your mind to enter in and now thoughts are beginning to settle in. It says, from the abundance of your heart, whatever comes out of your mouth, I'm here to tell you, you might disagree with me, but if it's coming out of your mouth, it's because it's already in great abundance. If negativity is coming out of your mouth all the time, it's because it's already in your heart in great abundance, and God wants to move you from the place of negativity so that you begin to think positive about your life. He wants to move you from the place of bondage to the place of freedom in your life. The scripture says, let this mind, the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your, of your mind. The ING says that you don't stop reading and studying the Word. It's an ongoing process that you have to daily renew your mind. Remember, the antivirus software is scanning. It's scanning because I'm getting information. Every day, it's scanning my mind. Is my, are my thoughts in agreement with God's will? Are my thoughts in alignment with the will of God? And so you got to know that you got to renew your mind, but there's some benefits to renewing your mind. Number one, the scripture says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove to be what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So the first benefit is that when you begin to set your, um, your thoughts in agreement with God's word, because our thoughts are not his thoughts, our ways are not his ways, but what happens is when I come in agreement, the will of God will be proven in my life. Not only will the will of God be proven, but you will live a life based on the truth of God's word rather than the lie and false perceptions and assumptions. You will also increase in sustainable freedom. Your mind will become stronger and you will no longer be so indecisive, so unstable. The Bible talks about a lot of different types of minds which we don't have time to go into all of them. You know, you have a many different kinds from an alienated mind, from a double-minded man or woman. But bringing your thoughts and subjecting them to the will of God, it will ensure that you have a stable mind. You will experience greater productivity as your mind is the storehouse for greatness. You will see more dreams come to pass. So you must understand that the enemy is trying to infiltrate your thoughts so that he can try to prevent you from tapping into God's greatness. That's what he's trying to do. You will begin to move forward based on your future rather than allowing past experience to suffocate the life out of you to suffocate the hope and belief out of you, to suffocate expectation out of you, you'll also become a stronger witness for the unbeliever. See, we must understand that the unbeliever is looking at us as an example. 
I'm not saying that they're, we, 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 we're not saying that we're perfect. God is not looking for perfect people. He's looking for surrendered people. He's not looking for you to be perfect, but what he is looking for someone that will be God conscious and say, God, I'm, the truth is I cannot live this life by myself. I must have the Holy Spirit helping me. So God is not concerned about you being perfect. He's more concerned about you having a heart toward him to say, God, this is not the right type of thinking, but I'm going to, I'm going to surrender to you and I'm allow the word of God to penetrate to help me become all that you have called me to be. We must guard our minds against temptation. Psalms 103 says, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. When we are being tempted to view life opposite of the truth of God, of the word of faith mentally, we are to put on the helmet of salvation. That Ephesians 6 and 17 talks about it. What does the helmet do? The helmet protects your mind. When we do this, we're saying, Lord, I want you to cover my mind with the blood. I will be guarding my mind from temptation. And I'm here to tell you, the enemy tempts us with all kinds of things. There are many different types of temptations. God cannot tempt you. Satan will tempt you. He's going to tempt you to believe a lie. He's going to tempt you to believe that people are talking about you when they're not. Even if they are talking about you, he's going to tempt you to try to curse them out, to handle them the wrong way. He's going to tempt you to say, well, I got to cater to my feelings and my emotions, so I have the right to treat you wrong because you talked about me. But that's not the will of God. It's a wrong way of thinking. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right. It seems right because you're in connected with your emotions rather than the truth. So it's a way that seems right, but the end thereof is destruction. So when you're trying to get back at somebody, believe me, you're already creating a foothold for the enemy to come in and rob and steal and kill from you. We got to deal with our thought life. Bring our thoughts in to alignment with the will of God. You got to understand the believer and the unbeliever alike are challenged with the same temptations every day. I myself, I'm challenged. There are times when you want to say the wrong thing. There are times when you want to do the wrong thing. There are times when you don't want to surrender to the will of God. There are times when you just don't want to come in agreement with the word of God. But those thoughts don't come from God. You got to be able to recognize that's not God. That's the enemy. I got Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Tucker. I have to be able to recognize when it's, Kevin's, it's what Kevin's will is. That's not the will of God. I got to be able to recognize and say, and be honest with myself, wait a minute, Kevin, this didn't come from Satan, it didn't come from God, it's my own flesh. Yeah, see, your freedom lies in your ability to be honest with yourself. You want to be honest with God, but God already knows who you are. He already knows the invisible parts of your life that man cannot see. So you got to be honest with yourself. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us. In the midst of obstacles, trials, and frustration, strategies and opportunities are birthed. Wherever there is negativity, believe me, there's an opportunity for a strategy. There's, a, there, there's, there's an opportunity for something great to be birthed out what appears to be so negative. You got to change your viewpoint. Everything you go through in life will not end up negative. There's always a God moment in the midst of negativity. Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if anything is worthy of praise, he says, think on these things. <laughs> to think these things are, the word are. Uh, when I read the scripture, it suggests to me that the opposite of are would be are not. <laughs> There's a suggestion that you have a choice to, to, as far as to where to direct or redirect your thoughts. So if he says, think now, God is so transparent. And that's one thing I love about the word of God, that God is transparent. He's telling us exactly what to think on to deal with the thoughts that are not of him. He's saying, think on those things that are true. Why are you dwelling on something that you know to be a lie? 
Why are you dwelling on something allowing the enemy to rob you of your peace and your joy by believing something that is merely an assumption? Why are you allowing the enemy to pre pre prevent you from moving forward by just simply listening to an opinion? The Bible declares, think on those things that are true. If it's not true, I'm telling you, I'm shutting the door on the enemy. I'm shutting the door on the enemy. So he says, think on those true. Then he says, honest, just, just versus unjust. You may experience some situations in your family that's unjust. You may experience some, some situations in the legal system that's unjust. Things in corporate America, that's unjust. Things in church, that's unjust. But what are you going to do? Are you going to reflect on the situation that is just? Or are you going to allow what is just to rob, for, unjust to rob from you? See, it's not that the situation don't exist. He's trying to prevent you from allowing your thoughts to marinate on that situation. Because if the enemy can get in, you've already lost the victory. See, we are already victorious. It's the will of God that we fight the battle and maintain the position of victory. That's what God is trying to get us to that place. God's thoughts, God's thought process is clearly revealed in the scripture, in the scripture when he's telling us about the scripture. He says, think of those things that are pure versus unpure versus ungodly. Pure versus ungodly. Oh, I can tell you, there's a lot of things that we see on social media, on, on television, that is very impure. But see, if you're not careful and you allow your thoughts to be gravitated to what is impure and let it settle in your spirit, your actions will begin to reflect what's impure. God is trying to prevent you from walking into t doors of temptation that is trying to steal and kill from you. He said, think on those things are lovely. The opposite of lovely would be hatred. The opposite of lovely would be unseemly unlovable. Don't think that because you don't allow what your personal experience have been over life to think that you, it's impossible for you to love again. Don't, don't allow that thinking. Because if you don't love, it's the foundation of the life of the believer. The good report versus the bad report. Can't get into school, hmm, sound like a bad report. Marriage will fail, sound like a bad report. Sickness and disease cannot be delivered, sound like a bad report. Been in the situation for 10, five years the same way, sounds like a bad report. The Bible says think on the good report versus the bad report. The success of our dreams and whether they thrive or die all depends on the mental environment we create with negative and ungodly thoughts. A blockage is created when this happens. Are you allowing your thoughts to abort the baby that God is trying to birth in you? Every one of you out here, including me, God has anointed and he's called you to something great and he's planted a seed of greatness on the inside of you that before you leave this earth, it's supposed to come forth. Isaiah 55 and 8, we said it earlier, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways are your ways, said the Lord. It gives the suggestion that your thoughts and your actions correspond alike. If you begin to think like God, then your ways will become like God. The way we manage life will be like God. The way we manage situations will be like God. What is the call to action for the believer as you're starting this journey of renewing your mind and putting on this antivirus software. We must adopt the mind of Christ. Renew our mind daily with reading and studying the Word of God. Allow the Word to govern our thoughts. We have to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit to help us properly process our thoughts. Let me tell you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is vital in your life. The Bible says he's a keeper, he's a healer, he's the revealer of all things. Things that you do not know and God wants you to know it, guess what? The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Don't be mind, don't, don't, don't be sidetracked by people talking about you behind closed doors. I'm telling you from firsthand experience, whatever it is that the will of God desires for you to know, the Holy Spirit will reveal it. People can be sitting right up in the midst of you and God can be speaking to you right about them. And they think they got over you, but God has already said, he just told you to be quiet, don't let them know. <laughs> A 
Ask God to search our hearts and put the light on us. Allow the word of God. The word of God will, will, will help us transcend from the place of blindness. When we allow the word to put the light on us, that's when we're able to see clearly now where I'm no longer walking in deception. I'm no longer being manipulated by the enemy, but I'm able to see clearly. I'm on my way to freedom and victory. Yes, continue to plant seeds of positive thinking for a future harvest of greatness. Here's the thing. You plant seeds of negativity, it's a future harvest of destruction. You plant seeds of positive seeds, it's a future harvest of greatness. It's, it's just that simple. Like with protecting a computer, along with the antivirus, we sometimes got to defragment and get rid of old junk. See, the antivirus also helps you that defragment it, and it helps you get rid of old junk. I would suggest there's some of us in here that needs to get rid of some old junk. It is the old things that have prevented you from moving into destiny. It is the old things, the old friendships, the old relationships, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of thinking that have stopped you and some people got to get free. Free from those bondages. Free from the old ways of doing things. How dare the enemy tries to trap you into doing something old when God is trying to get something fresh to you. Don't let the enemy deceive you into thinking that the old way is working. My God, my God, as we close. Ah, time went by fast. Stand to your feet. We're going, I'm telling you, I got a confession and a declaration that we want to declare in this house. Because the power of declaring the word of God, the one thing that you must remember, remind yourself to do as you're going through this process of renewing your mind and you're tearing down those strongholds is that you have to begin to speak the word over your mind. You have to begin to declare the word over your mind because again, the word of God is the helmet of salvation. It's just like in the game of football, you have a helmet. The helmet helps protect the brain. It helps protect from infracture and wounds. The Word of God does the exact same thing. It's there to protect and guard our mind and to keep us. The Bible said, they that keep their mind stayed on him. He will keep them, male or female. He says, they, that suggests, that, that scripture does not apply to everybody. It is only referencing the ones that keep their mind stayed on the Word of God. If your mind is not on the Word of God, you will lose your peace. And he says, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I will keep you in perfect peace, which means undisturbed peace. All hell can be taking place around you. But God said, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. It doesn't matter what goes through your life, God will keep you in perfect peace. Woo! Father, we thank you. The Lord gave me a confession. And I'm, I'm going I'm to declare it. I just want you to come in agreement and declare the same thing. Remember, it's a unified corporate expectation that I'm moving from the place of bondage and I'm transitioning into the lifestyle of freedom. In the name of Jesus. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? All right. Confess after me. I will not be in bondage to old and wrong ways of thinking. temptations nor detrimental experiences from my past I will not live out nor experience the manifestation of mental and emotional bondages because of what is hidden and suppressed behind closed doors I will no longer just cope with or manage a lifestyle of bondage because of negativity I rebuke delusions I rebuke false perceptions I embrace this transformational process I am transformed I will endure this process transformation belongs to me this transformation is free in me sustaining me growing me stretching me purifying me building me protecting me strengthening me maturing my character enhancing my quality of life i declare that i have the mind of christ 
Negativity cannot and will not lord over my life. By faith, I will immediately cast down any and all negative thoughts. I choose to allow the word to govern and direct my thoughts. I declare that as I renew my mind daily, God is thrusting me. God is thrusting me. God is thrusting me into my greater future. Into my greater future. Unhindered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the majestic, mighty name of Jesus. In the name of the one that has all power. In the name of the one that has all victory. I will not live in defeat. Thank you, Jesus. I will not, I will not, I cannot. I'm telling you, it's some of y'all in here. They got to tell the devil, I will not. I will not. I will not. I cannot. You no longer have Lord over me. Satan, take your hands off of me. In the name of Jesus, I shall live in freedom. No longer will I be in the bondage. Satan, you got to go. Get out of my life. Get out of my family. Get out of my business. In the name of Jesus. Tell the devil he got to go. He is the defeated one. He will not rob you. You are already victorious. You shall maintain your place of victory. I'm telling you. Your challenge and the challenges and the struggles that you're going through right now. They are not unto death. Before I go, let me give you this analogy. I'm originally from Columbia, South Carolina. And as many of you know, there was a terrible flood over the last several days. And quite damaging. Even in some of the places that I am very, very familiar with. Even some of the areas where I used to live. And I was speaking with my mother on this week. And we were in conversation about the flood and she said to me, Kevin, she said, it's been said that because the water was so saturated that it began to uproot foundations that have been long standing. <laughs> you may ask Kevin, what are you really trying to say? The word of God. Oh yes. <laughs> mm. the word of God is life the word is water when you begin to allow the word of God to saturate your mind the word will get so saturated in your mind that it will begin to uproot wrong and old patterns of doing things it will begin to uproot and destroy things that have been holding you captive things that have been holding you bondage you got to allow the word of God to saturate your mind, saturate your thought life and begin to uproot those challenges, uproot those strongholds, uproot those bondages. Yes, God. Yes. It's the word of God. Don't ever let the enemy think that it's your opinion, that it's your only suggestion. The word is your only answer. The word of God is your only answer. The word of God is your victory. Allow the word of God to saturate your mind, saturate your thoughts. When you saturate it, things will begin to be uprooted. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Things will begin to be uprooted. I'm telling you, it's, it's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season to get delivered. Somebody's season. To get delivered, somebody sees it. Oh, oh, somebody sees it. Somebody came here this morning. Yeah, the enemy thought you wasn't going to get free, but the word of God is active. The word of God will begin to cut. The word of God will begin to destroy. It's somebody sees it. Somebody sees it. Somebody's moment to walk in victory. Somebody's moment to get out of bondage. It's somebody's season. 
Woo! I'm telling you, it's somebody's season. You got to know that it's your season. It is your moment. It is your hour. God allowed this word to come because it's your moment to get free. It's your moment to maintain your freedom. Do not walk out these doors and go back into bondage. It is your moment. It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. I dare somebody to run. It's somebody's season. Hey! It's somebody's season. You gotta get your victory. You gotta get what belongs to you. It's somebody's season. Hey! It's somebody's season. It's somebody's season. Somebody's season. Run for your victory. Somebody's season. Oh! Let it go, child. Say, shop up, 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 up,